In this tutorial, we will learn how Amadine works with images. Although the app is a vector editor, a significant part of this video will be about raster images. Most often, they are used in vector designs as backgrounds and textures. There are several ways to bring an image into an Amadine document. Let's begin with the easiest ones. We can drag an image from the desktop or folder in Finder and drop it onto the canvas. Something similar happens when we use the import command in the file menu. Another method is copying an image in some app and pasting it in Amadine. Notice that we pasted the image into an existing document, but there is a different way. It is possible to drag and drop an image into the app's icon. Now a new document is created for you with the image in it. The size of the sheet was created equal to the image size. This technique is useful when you want the image to become the background of the entire design. In all these cases, the image wasn't scaled. For example, if it has 1024 pixels per side, it will have the same size in the document. There is also an alternative approach. We can fill a shape with an image. To do that, we open the Appearance panel, click on the circle of the Fill property, and open the Image tab. Then we click on Choose Image and navigate to the file. All these settings will be explained soon. To insert an image with the default settings, simply drag it onto the Fill circle in the panel. Just don't forget to select the object before doing that. All these methods have two things in common. First, they place an image inside a shape, either one that you selected or a rectangle if you use import or drag and drop. Secondly, the image fill settings are available even if you didn't use the panel to import the image. Let's see what they do. The Choose Image button, as we already know, lets you import an image. The preview on the left displays the imported image. The fill type control defines how the image fits the shape. We have three options here, fill, stretch, and tile. The fill fits the image into the shape. Some image parts may become invisible if they go outside the shape. By default, either width or height of the image fits the shape exactly. The center of the image coincides with the center of the shape. We can change this by moving the image with the help of this handle. The X and Y fields show the distance between the centers of the image and shape. The next control rotates the image in relation to the shape. The scale slider resizes the image. You can see that the scale X and scale Y sliders move as well. We have scaled the image preserving the aspect ratio. Scale X and scale Y let you change the image width and height independently. The shear slider distorts the image, turning it into a trapezium. Now let's set the fill type to stretch. This option automatically adjusts the image width and height to fit the shape. It's likely that your image will become distorted. Notice that most of the controls were disabled. After switching the fill type to tile, the settings in the panel work mostly in the same way as with the fill option. In order to see what is different, we need to reduce the image scale. In the tile mode, the image replicates endlessly filling the entire shape. In the fill mode, there's only one copy of the image. The space around it is empty. We haven't yet touched upon the opacity and blend mode settings at the top of the panel. With the opacity control, you can make the image transparent. The blend mode options define how the colors of the image interact with colors of other objects. This tutorial doesn't cover this functionality. The Amadine app supports importing the PDF and SVG formats as well. That enables you to edit files in these formats and to also add vector elements to your design from outside. Once you import a PDF, it appears in the document as a single object. To edit it, you have to expand it. An imported SVG image can be edited right away. I hope you learned something new from this tutorial. Thanks for watching.